here we have an example from double integrals. And we're given a double integral, which we're going to say the value is i. And we're given a region where we want to compute the integral of that x squared y cubed function over. And from the picture, you can see that the region of integration, which is a two-dimensional set, is a quarter of a disk, a badly drawn disk. Now, how do we do it? Well, you know, you could work out the equation for this edge and this edge and this edge and then do it in a, a Cartesian style. But what we like to do is work smarter, not the harder. So we're going to use polars for this one. Okay. Now, sometimes polars are a good way of simplifying things, especially when you have things like disks or washers or uh, circles or something like that um, that you're integrating over, or your integrand has something like x squared plus y squared in it. Doesn't in this case, but that's always something to look out for. Okay? So, what we'd like to do is describe this, this region in terms of polar coordinates. Okay? So, remember for polar coordinates, we have two uh, uh, variables, I guess. We have a length and we have an angle. Okay, so the length r is the distance from any point to the origin, and theta is the angle that um, the point makes, or the, the line segment associated with the point makes with a positive x axis. Okay, now one good way that I've found to use polars or to, to find out what's going on is that, say, you start at the origin, yeah, and you look at your region and you draw a line or a ray coming out of the origin that passes through your region. Okay? And you look at that that ray, that purple ray, and you go, okay, where does the ray enter the region and where does the ray exit the region? So if we start at the origin, we're kind of already on the edge of the region, right? And you can see here, as we exit the region, that would correspond to another value of, of uh, that, 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 that's the distance one from the, from the origin, okay? So, if I look closely, my R values are gonna be when I enter and when I leave. I, I'm already kind of on the edge here. So when little r equals zero, that'll be one boundary of the set. And when little r equals one, that'll be the other boundary. Okay, just by drawing a little ray. Make sure you understand that. Well, you can, you, you can, you can use it in your own, like, try to interpret these, these regions in your own way, but I'm just trying to show you what, how I do it. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the second thing we want to work out is the theta. Okay, the bounds on the theta. So, if I start at theta equals zero, how much of a rotation do I need to do on that purple ray? to trace out the whole, or cover the whole set. Okay, well it's a quarter of a turn, isn't it? Yeah? So in radians, that'll be zero to pi on two. Okay? And that's it. Now, this is a pretty reasonably simple region, but it gets difficult, you know, if it's a washer or... Um, uh, part of a disk that isn't centered at the origin. That's when it starts getting a bit, bit more tricky. Okay? But this little ray technique will, will work um, you know, in, in many cases. Okay, so let's transform I into the polar form, right? So what we do say R2 and R1. You replace the, um, the, the integral signs with the limits of integration involving the new variables. F, in your F, X is replaced with R cos theta, 
Y is replaced with R sine theta, and DA is replaced with ROD, ROD theta, like a pirate. <laughs> ROD, ROD theta. Okay? So this area element, DA, in polars is R, DR, D theta. Now that R is multiplying through with the F, and the biggest mistake students make is they put the R down and they forget about it in the next step. Okay? So, what we're going to do here is replace theta 1 and theta 2 with 0 and pi on 2, R1 and R2 with 0 and 1, replace X with R cos theta, Y with R sine theta. And then hopefully it's simplified things. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to get um, R squared cos squared times R cubed sine cubed. Don't forget about that R. Times R dr d theta. Okay. So now it's looking a bit messy because we've got a cos squared and a sine cubed in there. But we can handle that. We can handle that. Okay. Now... Here's a little time-saving technique that those big professors don't want you knowing about. Well, screw it, I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, see how everything that we're integrating is a product, right? You've got R times something else involving R times something else involving R times with a product of theta, okay? Now, when you have... A product of one variable times a product of the other variable, so a product of r times a, times a function of r times a function of theta, you can split the integral into the product of two integrals. Let me say that again. When you have an integrand that is a function of one variable, r, times a function of the other variable, theta, you can turn that double integral into the product of two single integrals. Um, just a question. Mm -hmm. Here, that one. That's what um, the the area element in polar coordinates is. So is r dr d theta. Okay. It's it's uh, a little bit delicate to prove. You, you use a wedge and averages and oh, of course I've got a video on it. But um, yeah, it's definitely meant to be there. But, and people forget it. Okay. So what I can do, I can group all those r's together. I can group all the thetas together and just get single integrals. Okay. Let me show you. Okay, so what I can do, cos squared sine cubed. Times r squared r cubed r r6. Now, let me just sort of give it give it give you a check here. One of the important things is the uh, limits of integration have to be constant. They can't be functions. Okay, so you can't do this for everything, but when the limits of integrations are constant and it's one a function of one variable times a function of the other variable, you can split that double integral. Okay? Well, then we know what that's going to be. That's going to be one-seventh. Yeah? So it's just a matter of integrating this. Okay, so think back to a second course in calculus where you're integrating powers of cosine and sine and things like that. Not very fun, but we can still do it. Okay? So, uh, that's going to go to 1 7th, and we're going to work on this. Okay, so the question is, how do we attack that uh, integrand? We probably, I mean, there's probably a number of ways to do it, but one way would be to split the sine cubed up into sine squared times sine, and then rewrite sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared. That way you've got powers of cosine multiplying with 1 sine. Okay? So that, that's the way I've done it here. Okay, so that's going to be 1 7th. So I'll put that out the front. So I'm going to leave this sign alone. So I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to work on the sine squared. Right? 
I can write sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared, and then I've got only cosines multiplying with a sine in there. All right, so let me, um, let me show you. So if I expand that bracket, I'm going to have a cosine squared times sine and a negative cosine to the power 4 times sine. Okay, and we know that the derivative of you know, sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you can integrate this by, if you want to, by substitution or just simply by, by writing it down. Now again, you would learn this in a second course in calculus. I have lots of videos on it. All right, so let's, let's think about the cos squared times sine. Okay, that's going to, going to go to something like a cos cubed, right? But not quite. Okay, it's going to go something to something like a one third cos cubed. But again, we have to fix that up. Negative one third cos cubed. Yeah. So the first one will be negative one third cos cubed. Then we've got negative cos to the power 4 times sine. That'll go to something like cos to the power 5. Okay, no, not, well not really. We go to 1 fifth cos to the power 5. And then it's just a matter of plugging in the limits of integration. Okay? Okay, so if you plug in pi on 2, they're both going to be 0. And if you plug in, uh, sorry, uh, theta equals pi on 2, they're both going to be 0. And if you plug in theta equals 0, uh, that's going to give you a 1, and that's going to give you a 1. So you're going to get something like this, according to my calcs. Okay, and if you uh, clean that up, you'll get the following one. 